Iraqi government forces backed by the U.S. allies close to retaking an airport in Mosul from Islamic State militants. A mission underway to remove ISIS from western Mosul. Humanitarian agencies preparing for as many as 400,000 civilians who may flee the city because of the fighting. Secretary of Defense uh, General James Mattis committed to the cause saying, quote, I imagine we'll be in this fight for a while and we will stand by each other. All right, joining us now to give his, uh, his take on all of this and the U.S. role in Iraq and other hotspots around the world is Foundation for Defense of Democracy senior counselor and former Deputy National Security Advisor to Vice President Dick Cheney, John Hanna. John, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Um, lots to talk about. Let's begin with what's going on in Iraq. Uh, I get the sense that ISIS is losing ground. Yes, there's still ISIS-inspired attacks around the world, particularly in Europe, but I feel like we have them on the run. Would you agree? Certainly in their in their geographic center, which is mm -hmm. Iraq and Syria, I think they're they're on their way to defeat. And that is an absolutely critical victory that we've got to win, Ashley. They say that their caliphate, its establishment was ordained by God. And I think uh, if we leave them uh, scattered to the four winds, uh, it deals a real death blow to their narrative. But as you say, uh, given the fact that President Obama kind of slow rolled this war, they've had three years to metastasize across the Middle East. We'll have thousands of foreign fighters returning to their home countries, including uh, in Europe. Mm. And of course, we've got people sitting at home who don't even leave their, their own countries, who are radicalized online, just waiting to be triggered to carry out operations, including in the United States. So there's still a lot of danger out there. We seem to be having more of a uh, presence there. We have some 5,000 troops and reports now that those troops, those U.S. troops, pushing closer to the front line, perhaps more than just an advisor and trainer of Iraqi forces. Do you agree with that? Yes, even before uh, President Trump came in, we yeah. pushed our guys closer to the front lines. There's now uh, uh, Secretary Mattis has got a report to the president in about a week, deliver to him a new plan to even accelerate the destruction of ISIS. That could include more troops. Uh, it could include Apache helicopters, more artillery on the battlefield. So I think, if anything, we're going to be watching an escalation happen here over the course of the next several weeks and months. Of course, there are other issues that uh, the NSA uh, uh, advisor, General McMaster, is going to have to deal with. Uh, Russia, which is a complicated one, it's always been complicated with Russia. We know about Vladimir Putin. What kind of approach would you like to see General McMaster take with the Russians? Well, I think the first thing that the general's got to do is build on what the administration has already done and not gotten a lot of credit for, which is to really establish that alliance with NATO and Western Europe, mm. that we're going to stand strong together. That's going to be the cornerstone of our national security policy in Europe. And therefore, the Russians need to understand that we've got clear red lines at NATO. They've done what they've done in Ukraine, but they can't be messing around with other vulnerable NATO states, in particular in the Baltics. I think that'll give us a basis then to really begin trying to get after these very naughty issues of what's happening in Ukraine. And of course, the Russians are going to have a huge role in Syria. They are right now yes. the dominant power broker there. Yes, because we allowed them to. And finally, I just wanted to bring up North Korea, if I could, with you. Reports that perhaps the administration would like to have some North Korean officials come to the White House to, to talk and at least try and find some common ground. But as someone pointed out yesterday, it doesn't matter what you say to the North Koreans or rather what they say to you. They're going to do what they're going to do anyway. You can't really believe them. Well, let's just be clear. These talks are between North Korean officials and U.S. non-governmental experts. So it's really a track to affair. Listen, if we can get intelligence, if we can find out what's on their minds, that's always a good thing. But nothing about the North Korean threat will have changed the nuclear, the missile threat. Let me tell you, the most important thing that's happened over the last week, Ashley, is that China has said it is going to cut off all North Korean 
exports of coal to China. That's up to 40 percent of the North's revenue. If the Chinese are serious, that's a big win for President Trump, and it can exert real pressure on this regime in Pyongyang. And plus a strong uh, relationship with Japan as well. And it seems to me that uh, Prime Minister Abe and, and, and President Trump seem to get on very well. That's important for that part of the world as, as well, isn't it? Absolutely. That is uh, the crown jewels of America's national security policy are these alliances with some of the strongest and most economically prosperous countries in the world. We've got to do everything in our power to maintain those. And as you saw, J Secretary Mattis's first trip abroad was, in fact, to Asia to yes. shore up those alliances with Japan and South Korea. I did notice that indeed. Uh, John Hanna, Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your expertise. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Ashley.